Hello students, this is Dr. Anita Raj, your chemistry mentor, welcoming you for another session in biomolecules. Today we shall see the structural elucidation of glucose, okay? So before going into the structural elucidation of uh, glucose, first we should know what is glucose and how it is prepared, okay? So actually this naturally occurring glucose is colorless in nature and it is crystalline solid, okay? And it is highly soluble in water and they are insoluble in ether. This we all know, is it not? When we are dissolving glucose in water, it is easily, it gets easily dissolved, right? But it is insoluble in ether, okay? And the aqueous solution of glucose is dextrorotatory. So, it is called as dextrose. What is the aqueous solution of glucose? It rotates the plane polarized right in the clockwise direction. That's why it is called as dextrorotatory. So, this uh, solution, glucose, is otherwise called as dextrose, okay? And it is an aldohexose. Why aldohexose? Aldo means, see this is the structure of glucose, okay. See we are having the uh, aldehyde group, okay. Since it is having the aldehyde group, it is called as aldo and moreover it is having 6 carbon atoms, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, since it is having 6 carbon atoms, it is called as hexose. So, aldo plus hexose, so aldohexose, understood. And it is the monomer of starch and cellulose. See, what do you mean by monomer? What do you mean by, uh, see, it starts, start, the building block of starch is this glucose, okay? So, that's why it is called as the monomer of starch. So, glucose, uh, this uh, starch is made up of uh, glucose and cellulose is also made up of glucose. So, starch and in starch and cellulose, we have glucose, so it's the monomer, okay? Its molecular formula is C6H12O6, C6H12O6. See, when you are uh, counting the number of carbon atoms, you are having 6 carbon atoms and number of hydrogen atom is 12 and oxygen is 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. So, this is the molecular formula of glucose. Now, we shall see the preparation of glucose. See, it is prepared from sucrose that is a cane sugar. See, when an alcoholic solution of this a sucrose is boiled with either dilute hydrochloric acid or a sulfuric acid, it undergoes hydrolysis. This sucrose undergoes hydrolysis to form glucose, okay, and fructose in equal uh, amount, okay. It gives a glucose and fructose. C6H12O6 plus C6H12O6, okay. So, this is glucose and this is a fructose, okay. So, in equimolar we, uh, quantities, we are getting these two compounds, right. On cooling this uh, resulting solution, glucose being less soluble than fructose, it separates out, okay. When you take, so let us see how it is prepared from starch. Actually, this glucose is prepared commercially from starch, okay. See, when uh, glucose is obtained by hydrolysis of the starch by boiling it with dilute sulfuric acid at 393 Kelvin, okay. At 393 Kelvin, right. So, when you are boiling at 393 Kelvin, in the presence of dilute sulfuric acid, we will be getting glucose, okay. So, here we will get glucose, C6H12O6, okay. Here we should maintain the uh, uh, pressure between 2 to 3 bar, okay. So, this pressure should be maintained. So, it is uh, it's easy to prepare glucose from sucrose and starch, understood. Next, we shall move into the important part of this session, that is a structural elucidation of glucose. Actually, Glucose structure can be studied in three parts. The first one is open chain structure, configuration and cyclic structure. So, three parts are there in the uh, structural elucidation of glucose, okay. So, now we shall see, today we are going to see this open chain structure as well as the configuration, okay, in detail, right. First, let us see the open chain structure of glucose. Glucose has been assigned the following open chain structure based on the following evidences. There are certain uh, reactions which gives a proof for this open chain structure. So, this is the open chain structure of glucose, okay. Now, let us see the evidences that acts as a proof for this open chain structure of glucose, okay. Here goes the first reaction. See, when you are heating this glucose with hydrogen iodide, glucose forms N hexane, okay. When you are heating this glucose in the presence of hydrogen iodide, we get N hexane, okay. Let me write the uh, formula for N hexane. CH3, CH2, 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 CH3, okay. So, this is N hexane plus we will be getting 6 molecules of water. Here we are having uh, 14 hydrogen atoms, 
that the sporting hydrogen atoms combines with the O and uh, will get water molecules. So water molecules re uh, removed, that is six water molecules and rest of the hydrogen atoms will be joining with the other carbon atoms. So we are getting a saturated compound that is N-hexane. Okay, this is N-hexane. We all know that N-hexane has a straight chain uh, uh, nature, is it not? Okay, so what do we infer from this reaction is this reaction shows that six carbon atoms are linked in straight chain. Okay, we all know that N hexane has a straight chain uh, nature. So from this reaction, we are coming to a conclusion that this glucose is uh, having six carbon atoms and that two are linked in straight chain. Understood? So coming to the next reaction, when glucose is treated with hydroxylamine. When it is treated with hydroxylamine, it forms oxine and with HCN, with HCN it forms cyanohydrate. Okay? So, this glucose uh, reacts with hydroxylamine to form oxine and adds a molecule of hydrogen cyanide to cyanohydrate. Okay? These are the characteristic reactions of carbonyl compound actually. So, let us see how the reaction takes place. What is the compound form, uh, is formed? See here, this aldehyde other other groups they remain as such okay they remain as such only this aldehyde group or the carbonyl uh, carbon will be uh, reacting or it forms the oxide okay so let me write the product for this ch double bond noh single bond ch oh four times and then this forms ch Okay, so here what's happening here? Water molecule is removed. Okay, water molecule is removed. This OH combines with the hydrogen of this. Okay, it combines with this hydrogen and it is removed as water molecule. So, rest will have. So, after the removal of water molecule, we'll have this product. Okay, oxide. So, this is the oxide. Okay, we will get an oxide. Now, what's happening here in the case of. Uh, HCN, what's the product formed here? We'll get an adduct. Okay, we'll get an adduct. CH, OH, CN, then here, CH, OH, four times, then CH2, OH. Okay, so this is a cyanohydrate. Cyanohydrate. This is cyanohydrate. Okay, so this these are the compounds formed. So based on these compounds here, the uh, uh, hydroxylamine as well as HCN both are reacting only in the uh, uh, carbonyl co compound. Okay, C double bond. The so, co carbonyl group. Okay, only they are acting only on the carbonyl group. So here only the change takes place. Okay, this is an oxime and this is a cyanohydrate, and this indicates the presence of carbonyl group. Okay, C double bond O. This represents that the person where is a C double bond O group in the uh, compound glucose. Okay, this confirms the presence of carbonyl group. Understood. This reaction is with bromine water. With bromine water, glucose gets oxidized to 6 carbon carboxylic acid. So, this is glucose. Okay, this is glucose. When this glucose is oxidized in the presence of bromine water, this forms gluconic acid. Okay, this let us write the product now COOH, CH, OH. Four times CH2 OH. Okay. So the name of this compound is a gluconic acid. Okay. See here we are having the same number of carbon atoms. C1. Here we have four, so five, six. So six carbon atoms are there. Here also one plus four. 5, 6, 6 carbon atoms. Okay, the number of carbon atoms is remaining the same, but only the changes here the aldehyde group is getting converted to a carboxylic acid. So, this glucose also gets easily oxidized even with a mild oxidizing agent like bromine water to form a carboxylic acid. This carboxylic acid contains the same number of carbon atoms as that of the glucose. Therefore, the carbonyl group present here must be an aldehyde group. So, this is a proof for the presence of the aldehyde group. Okay. So, from what you see in the inference, this confirms the presence of carbonyl group and also it is present as an aldehyde group. You can understand. Next important reaction is with acetic anhydride. See, with acetic anhydride, this uh, glucose forms pentaacetate. Okay. So, when acetylated with acetic anhydride, this glucose forms a pentaacetate. 
okay so if it is forming a pentaacetate that shows the presence of five of its groups in glucose okay and moreover it is a stable compound okay let me see let us see how it's it's formed ch4 this one remains as such aldehyde group there will be no change the reaction will be taking place only in the uh, oh group okay ch so this remains as a ch so here we are having four oh groups is it no so in this place we will be having the acetate ring okay o c double bond o ch3 four times okay here again we will have CH2, this one, CH2, O, C, double bond O, CH3, okay. So this is a pentaacetate, this is a pentaacetate, okay, pentaacetate. Right. See here how it's pentaacetate. Already here we are having four plus one five. So it is pentaacetate, right? And this is a stable compound. Therefore, the five OH groups must be attached to the different carbon atoms. Since it is forming a stable compound, uh, we can in infer that uh, the OH groups are attached to different carbon atoms. Can you understand? It's not attached to the same carbon atom, but they are attached to the different carbon atoms okay uh, uh, so suppose if OH groups are present in the same carbon atoms then this product won't be a stable one it will be an unstable since we are getting a stable product pentaacetate that refers that the OH group present in the uh, uh, glucose or in different carbon atoms so we are having five OH groups okay we are having five OH groups in glucose understood students next main reaction is on oxidation with the nitric acid glucose gives dicarboxylic acid okay see when a glucose is first oxidized in the presence of nitric acid it forms a gluconic acid okay see here this uh, uh, CHO will be getting converted to a uh, carboxylic acid group COOH CH OH four times CH2 so this is gluconic acid okay this is a gluconic acid this gluconic acid on further oxidation in the presence of nitric acid gives a saccharic acid saccharic acid here in saccharic acid both uh, this aldehyde group as well as the uh, uh, primary alcoholic group will be getting converted to an carboxylic acid group it will be getting converted to a carboxylic acid group okay so this is saccharic acid what's the spelling C S A C C H A R I C saccharic acid okay the formation of this dicarboric acid proves that there is a primary alcoholic group okay so primary alcoholic group is there so this is a primary alcoholic group so uh, the saccharic acid is formed that's the reason why the saccharic acid is formed can you understand so so all the above reactions proves the open chain structure of the glucose okay next we are going to see the configuration of glucose right actually the configuration of uh, glucose refers to the exact spatial arrangement of the OH groups present in the glucose okay actually the configuration of glucose was given by Fisher okay Fisher gave the configuration of glucose and that's why it's called as Fisher projection formula okay so, um, based on certain properties only, he has given this Fisher projection uh, formula. So, here the glucose correctly is correctly named as D plus glucose. So, normally glucose is uh, referred as D plus glucose. Okay. It is referred as D plus glucose. All right. Where D means the name before the name that is the D before the name of the glucose represents the configuration whereas this plus represents the dextro and rotatory nature of the glucose okay this plus refers to the glucose uh, dextro rotatory nature of the glucose and D refers to the configuration okay so normally sugars are divided into two families that is sugars having D configuration and L configuration okay configuration okay, let me write and show you See in D configuration, for example, in D glyceraldehyde, C H two O H. So this is the final carbon. Okay, and next to this, the adjacent carbon 
will be asymmetric in nature here H and again here CHO. Okay, we'll have like this, right? In D configuration, the OH group at, uh, attached to the carbon atom adjacent to CH2OH group on will be on the right side in D. Okay. This is D. Whereas in L, the same thing will be present on the left hand side. CH2OH C H O H this is for glyceraldehyde. Okay, this is for glyceraldehyde. So keeping this as a reference, we are writing for other products also. In this case of glucose, the OH group adjacent to CH2OH is on the right hand side, just like that of the D glyceraldehyde. That's why we call this as a D glucose. Okay. And plus represents the dextrorotatory nature of glucose. Mean the glucose solution will be rotating the plane polarized right in the clockwise direction okay, to the right. That's why it's called as dextrorotatory. Okay. So whereas this uh, glucose is correctly named as D plus glucose. Okay. Actually this uh, D has nothing to do with the optical activity of the compound as explained earlier. Can you understand? Well, fine students, I hope you might have understood what I have taught today. Let me meet you with the important topic that is the cyclic structure of glucose in my next session. Until then, it's Dr. Anita Raj, your chemistry mentor signing off from me. Thanks for watching.